Hello, this is Matt Wilhelm from Yellowstone Fly Fishing School in Livingston, Montana, working in partnership with Montana Angler Fly Shop in Bozeman, Montana. What I'm going to do today is, on the Gallatin River here, I'm going to do a macroinvertebrate sample, looking at some of the uh, aquatic insects and other invertebrates that live um, in this river. And we'll talk about their life cycle, we'll talk about their habitat, we'll talk about the flies that we can use to imitate them. Uh, so that's what we're going to do today, and I've got myself a uh, sampling net. Now keep in mind this is a giant net that I built myself. Um, it's really big. Now the thing is, is if you look at how this is constructed both now and when I get in the river, you can build your own net out of a couple of pieces of dowel rod and some window screen and some staples. And you just um, staple the window screen to the dowel rod and you can make your own sampling net that you can take with you to your favorite river or stream to kind of see what kind of insects and other uh, invertebrates are living there to help um, increase your fly fishing success. So what I've done is I've just taken a net sample out of the Gallatin River and it turned out to be a pretty healthy sample. Lots of stone flies, um, as you see here crawling around on the net in my finger. I'm going to try to get these into the, into the cooler here as quickly as possible because they they breathe with gills and we want to give them a good drink of water. So I'm just going to kind of dump these into the cooler so we can get a better look at them and talk a little bit about these wonderful insects that we found here and their relationship to not only fly fishing but to even water quality and, and food chains and food webs. So it's these insects have a lot to do with fly fishing of course but they also are key indicators of water quality health. So what I've got here is I've, I've taken the macroinvertebrates from the river, put them into a cooler full of water, and now, so we can better look at them and talk about them, I'm going to put them into a smaller basin. The first one that I'd like to talk about are the stoneflies. Um, I put some in a smaller cup right here, and the the stoneflies are a pretty amazing insect. For one thing, they're, they're great for fly fishing. Uh, these are the salmon flies. Actually, there's two different species in that small cup. There are the two larger ones are salmon flies, and then there's a couple of smaller stoneflies. Those are golden stones. Both of these stoneflies have a three-year life cycle, and they emerge in their third year. And what they do is they crawl out onto the bank, and they shed their exoskeletons. And we found a couple of exoskeletons here along the bank. Uh, there's an exoskeleton from what looks like a golden stone. Um, and here's another one right here. So what they do is they crawl out of the water and they shed their exoskeletons on the rocks. The adult emerges from the exoskeleton, its wings pop out, and they either fly to the bushes or crawl to the bushes where then they reproduce and the females will fly back to the water to lay their eggs. This stonefly hatch gives fly fishers an amazing fishing opportunity in two ways. First of all, when the adult nymphs are crawling to the bank and staging for emergence, they will lose their balance and they're not very good swimmers, they're more of a crawling insect. And when they lose their balance in the swift current that they live in, they will tumble in the water and the fish will eat the nymphs. So a week or so prior to the stonefly emergence, it's a very good tactic to fish a stonefly nymph, a large stonefly nymph like a Pat's rubber legs. And I'll just put this in the water. Like a Pat's rubber legs. And you can see that that fly isn't quite big enough. But anyway, maybe one size bigger of a Pat's rubber legs drifted along the bottom. The fish key in on that migration and they eat the nymphs like crazy. Stoneflies have an incomplete life cycle, meaning that they don't have a pupa stage. They do not go through a dramatic transformation. The adults look very much like the nymphs, except that they have wings. One of the neat things about stoneflies is that they are an indicator of water health. If you have stoneflies in your creeks or streams, that means that your water is pretty darn healthy. That means that you have high oxygen, low pollution, Lots of nutrition for the nymphs. They do not do well with any type of pollution, low water quality, low oxygen. So 
if I were to say what's the health of this water behind me on the Galveston River, I'd say very healthy because there are a lot of stoneflies in this sample. I'd also say if I were to come here fishing tomorrow, I would probably fish a large stonefly nymph because there's a lot of them in here. One last thing I'd like to mention, continuing with the life cycle, if I were going to fish uh, a dry fly, this is an imitation of a golden stone. The salmon flies will be more of an orange color underneath, but this would be a really good imitation of a stonefly adult that was coming back to the water to lay eggs. All right, so that's a little bit about stoneflies. And now I'd like to talk a little bit about caddisflies. Caddisflies live in rivers and streams. Every once in a while you find them in lakes, but mostly rivers and streams. They like swifter moving water. They have a complete life cycle, meaning that they started as an egg. They develop into a larva, then a pupa, then an adult. They go through a drastic metamorphosis from the larva to the adult because of that pupa stage, much like when a caterpillar turns into a butterfly. Caddisflies are also indicators of water quality. They do not prefer water that is polluted or low oxygen, so when you find caddisflies, you know that that water is in good health. From a fly fishing perspective, we're focusing on a couple different parts of the life cycle. We're focusing on the larva um, that lives down on the rocks, grazing on algaes as it grows throughout its year's life cycle. And then the larva will go into the pupa stage. It'll encapsulate itself in either its protective shell that it builds around itself, or if it's a free living caddis, it will get into a nook or a cranny and a rock or a log and kind of encapsulate itself there where it goes through its metamorphosis. The neat thing about caddis flies is, is that when that metamorphosis is happening, the gases will build up around the body of the insect that will help carry it to the surface of the water. And then they will emerge off the surface um, they'll fly up into the trees and they will reproduce and the females will come back to the water to lay eggs and they will either lay their eggs on the surface or some caddis will actually swim down under the surface of the water and lay their eggs subsurface. So for the fly angler, you have the opportunity of the larva, you have the opportunity for fishing of the pupa as it's emerging, you have the opportunity of the adult that comes back to lay their eggs really good time to fish caddis dries as far as the egg laying flights are in the evening the last hour or two before dark mayflies have an incomplete life cycle meaning that they go from the egg to the nymph directly to the adult stage most mayflies what they do when they emerge is they'll swim to the water surface and shed their exoskeleton and they'll dry their wings on the water surface. Some mayflies will crawl out onto the rocks and emerge that way, but a majority will swim to the surface where they shed their exoskeleton. And then they'll fly up to the bushes where they will shed their exoskeleton a second time. That will metamorphose them into the mature insect where they can reproduce, called a spinner. And the females will fly out over the water where they'll bob up and down in the air releasing pheromones to attract a mate and after they attract a mate and they reproduce the females fall to the water to deposit their eggs and the females expire so with mayflies you have a few different angling opportunities of course the nymphs live underwater for a year and the fish will feed on the nymphs all year round then when the nymphs begin to emerge and rise through the water column the fish will again feed on those emergers a lot of times those emergers will fight the upward pull um, of the gases that are entrained under their exoskeleton, try to swim back down, and then they float back up, they swim back down, and sometimes they exhaust themselves so much that when they get to the water surface, they don't have enough strength to break through. And sometimes the fish will focus on those dead emergers that are trapped under the surface film. For those mayflies that do emerge through the surface film, and shed their exoskeleton, their wings will pop up and they'll dry while they're floating on the surface of the water. There again is a wonderful fishing opportunity to fish a dry fly uh, imitation like a parachute Adams uh, type mayfly uh, to imitate that. And then when the, when the females return to the water to lay their eggs when they expire, uh, a lot of times their silhouette looks like an airplane as the fish look up from below. So you can fish the expired females and males as they land down the water called a spinner fall. In my fly box here, I'm gonna pull out a nymph that might imitate uh, that mayfly. And I'm gonna put it in a spoon so you can see it better. 
and maybe even get the real insect in the spoon here. And there's the, the real nymph and then my imitation right next to it. And that's a pretty close imitation. Again, because the water's moving at five or six miles an hour, the imitation does not have to be exact, but it needs to be close, especially in shape of the insect and size. So that's a pretty close imitation to the nymphs that are in the water right now. Another thing too is that mayflies are an indicator of water health, just like the stoneflies. When you find a healthy population of mayflies, that means that your water's in great shape. That's a little bit about mayflies. Wonderful fishing opportunity in lakes, ponds, rivers, and streams are pretty adaptable to all different water types. Anyway, go to your local fly shop and the women and men who work there will help you pick out an assortment of flies for a day of fishing along your local rivers and streams uh, to have success.